So next up, we have Francois, who's talking about moving from an API, from well, moving from a product that has an API to an API becoming the product. And he's doing it through the lens of learning about the API lifecycle through the lens of the Finastra model, which should be really interesting. And I'm sure we're all excited to hear from it. So Francois, take it away. Today, I would give you some feedback about the Finastra experience from a product as an API to API as a product. Great. So our journey to, uh, to, this, uh, to this model. So I'm Francois Lan. I'm director of the Open API uh, strategy at Finastra. I'm member of a group uh, that is about PSD2, that is about open banking, really uh, heavily, uh, let's say, lifting of, on uh, Open API, and member of the API thinking group. It is a group of uh, 80 companies, and I'm working on, um, on the API governance. Uh, and the process to make it uh, to make it happen properly. So, what is the open API journey? So I put here open because uh, you will see that uh, at the end of the presentation, this openness is uh, your critical things. So let's start from the beginning. Usually, everyone has a product. So this is a product. So this is a TV. It has some characteristics. Some uh, colors, etc., etc. capacity. This is the service. In fact, your TV, your product is nothing without being connected, just being connected to the, <clears throat> to the power. And then I also introduce one thing, your remote control. The remote control would be nearly the API from the human to this TV. Whatever the TV is good or bad, and even if it's good, if they have no remote control of, for today, no one would buy it. So there is really the difference between having a product that can be good, having the service, the things is plugged, and having the capacity to uh, enable it, the remote control. But this is what you see as a TV of today, or even yesterday. Now, this is a solution an ecosystem with Wi-Fi, with, uh, you can have your Netflix, you can have your YouTube on your TV. And now this is the place to be. So here you have really the three vision. What is a product? Now it's become a technical things, nearly a commodity versus a service. I want to watch the TV. I need to have also a smart interface to, work, to interact with it. And now I'm part of an ecosystem and I, I play with what I like. So that's the revolution between a product to a service to an ecosystem. Here is the new reality of finance. In Finastra, we deal with finance. And so here is the fintech economy. It's a slide. You can multiply this slide by number of countries. And if I take uh, there is a recent numbers only for France, there is around seven, more than 700 fintech declared. So it means that there is a profusion of ring, a profusion of actors. We as Finastra are not the best. We are not the best at everything. I think we need to be humble and we need to uh, accept, accept that we need to work with partners with, uh, with fraud detection, we are not the best at fraud detection. It's not our business. Our business is to do banking. So we need to be connected to a fraud, uh, fraud detection business. So what this slide shows is that we are nothing without the others. But with the others, we can be a lot. So that's uh, uh, here. <coughs> so Going back to the topic about APIs and API as a product, what we see and what we have in most of our company is we have product, everyone has product, and sometimes we want, we want to put APIs, we design APIs on top of them. But what are, we, <clears throat> what are you doing best? Things that you are doing at the beginning or things that you are doing at the end? 
you all know the response that at the end you are in a rush. So better focusing on doing things important right uh, at the beginning and at the end. So we need to switch from product then APIs, this is the logo of APIs, uh, to APIs then product. And even better, we can move to APIs then mock. Don't need to build your own server. Don't need you to build your own solution already. Just expose a mock, a stub, something that would be dummy, but that would still enable your enables the BTD topics or business driven development. Uh, it will also spot you the consistency topic that your APIs need to be consistent, it needs to be discoverable, that you don't need to put, that there is an ID that cannot be discovered, etc. And more, more important is to have the feedback loop. So having this, so you do that, you do APIs, mock, because of them, because now you are not in a closed world. As I mentioned, there was a lot of intake in our space. We, we need to expose our APIs even before the product is here. So that's really the mind, sh the mind shift that needs to be done is this API first to, uh, story. When you are doing a product, say API as a product, if it's a product, you need to do to build it first. So that's uh, really what matters in this uh, in this in this slide is to say, do your API in the first stage, and then mock, get feedback, and then implement. Usually, you uh, when you speak with uh, with products, with product lines, you would have this aspect, this this question, but. I have already APIs. Can I publish them as open APIs? Usually, it's a bad idea. You cannot paint on your APIs something else. Why? Because of the past. Because of the past, the past is, is an asset, but it's also a problem, usually. Uh, most of API, most of product has technical debt. That's life. It's very rare that you go to a product and they say, everything is perfect. I have no technical debt. I am greenfield. I always invest and invest. Always. And the, let's say the, the older the product is, the um, more usually the technical debt is. So that's really important. That do not pretend that your, that your legacy API can be open. Take this opportunity of designing an open APIs to, to take this as a modernization journey. So you have your product, fair enough, it's there, but design new APIs, reduce your technical debt, don't expose fields that you don't need. That could be obvious, but in the past, you may have added one field in your API design because of X, Y, Z, and later on, you don't even know if it is used. So if you don't know, don't use, don't expose it. So that's really important to first acknowledge that your API that has been designed in the past is maybe not an open API. That's when you do an open API, expose the less. This is also this the topic of this picture that usually you can see it's a nice product as just touch or Google search. And you can recognize very often your product look like that. And if you take these kind of things, if you expose it as a PIs, you expose your dinosaur, you expose your technical debt. And that's not the that's really not the target of, of this. Also, one last point is simple is beautiful. The most if you expose your complexity. In fact, you give your complexity to your client. Do they care about the complexity? Usually not, not a lot. They care about the service. 
how the technicity behind the scene is, how complex it is, they would not care. Even more, uh, there would be some defiance to the technicity and to the complexity. This is a basic problem. With adoption, <coughs> the stress comes with adoption. If you have no, no, success, no adoption, no success. And usually, the topic about adoption is simplicity. Again, the less you expose, the better it is. You have also take this opportunity to have design first, but I would say more a redesign first approach. Your product has been designed a long time ago. It's really an opportunity here to rethink, redesign, and again, because of this cost, this effect fixed cost that increase, because of that, put a particular focus to, to the design. API is about mostly API design. API implementation usually becomes the mechanics, but the API design is what would make the business simple and so that you would have the adoption of it. So we speak about APIs, we speak about um, redesign. Is, it, is API a technical beast? So maybe what you would hear about the vocabulary is about Swagger, it's about API specification, it's about JSON, it's about HTTP, verbs, implementation, Node.js, etc. So yeah, it looks, looks very technical. And even more, if you speak with your technical team, your product team, uh, if you want to have an API strategy, you need to have a developer portal to have uh, players register to it. You have to have an API gateway. It's a technical thing. It's a software that you need to learn. You need to handle self-registration, security, policy, or to some a lot of barbarism vocabulary. You need also to have a monitoring platform, database, etc., billing platform, still yet another, yet another database. You need to have a pipeline of publication. Just put your API specification to a developer portal so that it's, re it's represented nicely, etc. More than that, you need to have a good APIs. And for that, you need to have a good pipeline. You need to have a good pipeline that would ensure that these APIs would be a good one. So on that, I would do a but it's just about the focus of how we can ensure with a pipeline to have a good APIs. And that's really key here. But still, you see here a lot of things, a lot of specification, a lot of things that is technical. So is that really a technical beast? Not at all. Not at all. Why? Because here, is, when you speak about APIs, just at the end, you speak about interface. And that's easy one. Usually, usually you speak about business to business. So just that, you have business. So API is a business thing. You have also to speak about business to consumer. It's about connection. It's about, especially if you want, want to have API as a product, you need to understand the market demands. Why you have your product, but how people would consume your product. Not, not focusing on your product, definitely, but focusing on how people would consume your product. That's a key difference. And again, this, as you need to understand the market demand, this is about partnership. So a lot of ecosystem, you need to know the market, you need to know your uh, competitors, your, you need to understand the competitors, but as well uh, the partners that you can so, API is business too. To summarize this, in fact, um, you have the fact that yes, it's technical, that's true, but yes, it's business. In fact, what you do is <clears throat> what how to represent to represent this is 
the API specification is yes a technical artifact, but it needs to it's built to respond to a market demand, and it's a business interface. It's a business interface for your consumer. It's a bit net interface of your product. It's how players will consume your product, and this is this keys again. A good TV without a remote control now, no, no sale. You would not sell it. whatever the TV is good, a TV without a good remote control. That's the new business. To do that, you need to have a design approach. So we speak, we speak about uh, design first approach, but as you have seen, it's both way. It's about technical and uh, business. So you need to have the two actors uh, sitting together. So it's about it's a design together approach. So business analyst, architect, no silos. Business analyst would bring their market uh, understanding. Architect would bring their constraints because sometimes we have constraints. And also there is a topic about const building business solution. So I like the term of business architect. That you need to have someone who understands the business and someone who understands the architecture globally and have the two speaking together. And at the end, fair enough, you 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 get a contract, you get an agreement, and that becomes your APIs. So the role of an API manager is about connecting product and connecting people. So here I put all the division that I speak with. There is sales. You need to speak with sales because it is a product. API is a product, so you need to sell it. You need to speak with the partner enablement team because at the end, fair enough, uh, there is some partnerships that need to be built. You need to speak about the mark with the marketing just to organize hackathon because of uh, API is fostering innovation about legals. You expose things. Are you allowed to do that? Is there sensitive data? How to handle this? And there is also about partnership. You need about documentation. API is an API specification is nothing more than a documentation of your business. And so you need to have smart documentation. Support for sure. Architect we speak about security. It's expose your product to an external partner. So security becomes a key. Then you need to, for sure, to speak to HR because there is training to do. You need to speak with the technology because uh, teams, uh, because of the implementation. You need to speak with the operation because of APIs. So that's so the we are playing. So we have an initial state. It's where we uh, expose the business, the business definition. We do the feasibility, the prioritization. We also have a defined state when all that has been settled. And here is when where the discussion appears when we have the interface definition, KPI, valid KPI definition, and validation about all the actors about, okay, is it a go, is it a no-go about this API definition? At the end of this validation, we end up with an automatic mock so that we can share with the FinTech to get feedback, and that's, uh, that's what we are doing. But that's the beginning of the journey. After we have the develop phase, so more traditional coding, but we have also about deploying, development, about testing. Does the API definition is really implemented in the product as safe? We have about the security because security becomes a key here. Then we have the integrate stage, that is what we call uh, nearly UAT. Here you need to have security testing. Integrity testing in the real environment nearly. So you can do penetration testing. You do also the data privacy 
all the fields that are exposing goes to a data privacy filtering. We do the marketing review because at the end, it's artifacts that you put on your developer portal publicly. So it needs to be reviewed with nice marketing, with nice things. And we have the production. And production is about, I put my APIs to production to public and public can test it. Can, can, but to do that, you need to have a proper SLA. So you need to have proper alerting mechanism, proper monitoring to pick proper support to respond to the question, telemetry, and at the end, bidding, because at the end, it's business. What is good also with APIs, something that you don't have with traditional products, usually you have feedback loop. Because of all those telemetry data that you have collected, you can have a nice feedback loop so that you can know what and also uh, see the problems if there is a don't know latency or if people are not using it correctly, creating a lot of errors. So you have your feedback and your telemetry. Again, it's not something you should really leverage on that because it's not something that you that you have usually throw a product on premise and have a blueprint of it. But take care. We speak about API, fair enough. Uh, you need to do API first, fair. It's a topic. People will listen to you and then go back to their uh, go, go back to the day to their work. So it's really important that future it's strategy for breakfast. So what does it mean? It means that you need to change the culture. Otherwise, this this will be just work. And to do this. There is various uh, various solution for that, but uh, it's really important that you become humble here, that you learn little by little, that you do not create too much friction in your company uh, because of that. Uh, sometimes it creates friction, honestly. If I, uh, when you tell, this is not an open API, go back. It creates friction. And sometimes mm -hmm. it won't go back. And so that you don't have APIs. So there is a mix between being the police a bit, uh, a bit about being uh, an advisor, about being an enabler. And that's, that's the key point. APIs need to enable that. Mm -hmm. Two slides to conclude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's wrap it up. This is great. Thank you, Francois. So, yeah. One slide to conclude is about the one more thing. Your API is public. Because of that, it's a mind shift again. You have a digital experience with your client. So you need to provide a lot more services than usual. Than usual. You need to provide self-service. You need to provide sandboxing. Your API needs to be testable. That's critical. I was working with a fintech. We are not capable to do a self-service testing. No test, no way. I switched to the other one. Because you, when you are in the API world, you live in a competitive world. I was looking for an IDV provider, someone you can scan your ID card and it says if it's a wrong or false. There's tons of that. So I can test one. I can test two, I can test, test three. If there is buyers for adoption, I won't take it. Again, your API is public, so you need documentation you need to be perfect because if you don't understand it, no, I would do next. And you need to understand that when you are building an API, change is very costly. So that's also a game changer between what you used to do and uh, what you what you used to do in a product where you can change things, like in Gmail, you, you are used to change, but the Gmail API does not change. It's a critical thing. It's a critical thing when you need to think about your own map. So again, API as a product is a transformation journey for the company. It's serious. It's the culture need to shift, but it's really an interesting and an exciting term for the generation of your company. Great. Thank you so much, Francois. That was really interesting. I am sure...
people want to continue in the comments and you have a bunch of comments, so definitely go in there in the chat um, and learn more about now that you've made this shift, how Finastra has learned from it and how they've monetized their product. That was great. So thank you so much, Francois. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.